Well, I'm here at uh, the Black and Gold Shop in uh, Coralville with Chuck Long, uh, signing signing your books. Here is uh, Destined for Greatness. There you uh, go. This just came out, what, last month? Is that right? came out last month, beginning November, and it's uh, right before Christmas, so we're, we're hitting it pretty good. And uh, I've ha I have about 20 more signings to do before Christmas, so I'm on the road quite a bit. Uh, three in Waterloo this uh, tomorrow, this wow. weekend. Yeah, that's so. pretty crazy. Yeah, I know you've been in the Quad Cities, you've been right. in you've been in Northwest Iowa, uh, Sioux City, uh, West Bend, I think even. Is West right? Bend, yeah. We're trying to we're trying to hit the state, comb the state from the, from Sioux City to the Quad Cities, and and we've been to both so far. Uh, we have quite a few in the Des Moines area and the Iowa City, Cedar Rapids area. And we're right now at the Black and Gold Shop, and, and the Black and Gold Shop has decided to kick back um, their cut of the book to the Children's Therapy Center, okay. which is a, uh, I've been on the board for years, and and uh, it's a it's a center that gives money or raises money for kids with cerebral palsy uh, with with therapy <laughs> sessions for them, and I've been a part of it for 21 years and with an auction. But part of the proceeds, uh, if they come down to the Black and Gold Shop and buy part of the proceeds goes back to the Children's Therapy Center. So yeah. we try to tie in some fundraising along with it. And that's a personal issue for you too, right? Your brother has cerebral palsy? Yeah, my brother was born with cerebral palsy, so I've been a part of the uh, I've been a part of the um, Children's Therapy Center for twenty one years and it's near and dear to my heart. So we like it in the quad I like it in the Quad Cities because I'm I was raised in Illinois and obviously I love Iowa so the Quad Cities has a combination of both and uh, it's really been um, very rewarding but I was able to tie the book sales into into that uh, to, to raise some money for uh, different factions, but especially the children's service. Sure. Now, where did the inspiration for the book come? I'm sure over the years well, people were saying you need to write a book. You know. Well, Aaron Putsey, the author, uh, you know, we got to know each other about four years ago, and 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 we, I was telling him stories, mm -hmm. uh, football stories over dinner. He said, "Hey, you ought to put this in a book." And I said, you know, I haven't really thought about that. He goes, are you interested in writing one? I said, no, not till maybe I'm 70 or whatever. He said, no one's going to remember you then. You put, put it in a book now. Anyway, uh, long story short, um, I got, I thought about it. I said, you know what, now's the time to do it. I go around to speaking engagements and rotaries, and people want to know uh, the stories and take, take them back to the resurgence of Iowa football under Hayden Fry. That's right. what they want to hear. So... I said, Aaron, uh, hey, let's put it in, in a book. The beauty of what I like about Aaron Putsey as the author, he was born and raised on a farm. Okay. And so it was very important for me to have the farm element in the book. Mm -hmm. And he was perfect writer for it. Uh, a and F, you know, as you recall, Scott, you know, okay. A and F, the American East Farmers. Hayden was always in yeah. tune with the Ameri uh, the Iowa farmer. In fact, he told me, he said, hey, Charlie called me. Charlie said, "If you ever want to get in good with the Iowa people, you have to get in good with the farmer first. He always believed that. He was always in tune with that community, and uh, therefore, I wanted that element in the book. And Aaron Putsey was born and raised on a farm, so he's the perfect author. Did a great job, Aaron." Spent over 800 hours writing this, yeah. and uh, about two and a half years went into it. Pretty incredible. What, I guess, where does it start? Does it start with your days in Wheaton or when you were recruited to Iowa? Well, the very first chapter starts with the Michigan game okay. in 1985, uh, and he has a great description of that game. Uh, we were number one, they were number two, they had Jim Harbaugh, yeah. they had Bo Schembechler, and and so chapter one kicks right off with that game. And then it goes back to my my growing up days in, in Wheaton and has a few goofy pictures in there as well. And and, uh, and then it takes me all the way up until now what I'm doing now, which I'm the uh, CEO of the Iowa Sports Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we spread health and wellness and sports and recreation statewide. So uh, I'm, I, I run it. I'm on the Children's Therapy Center board and, and um, love the combination of both of those. But um, this has been a fun venture to, to talk about the good old days of Iowa football. Oh, I'm sure it has. What was your first memory of Hayden Fry? Um, I will never forget the first time I, I shook his hand. I got off the airplane in Cedar Rapids on my official visit, and I went to the I Iowa River Power Company, still going in Coralville, right. and that's where I met Hayden Fly for the first time, shook his hand, and, along with his wonderful staff, yeah. and I knew there was something special going to go around here at Iowa. We weren't winning yet, but I, you just had a feeling we were going to.
and that was uh, for, what probably 1980 going into 1980. Yeah, that was 1980, my my uh, my senior year, and then 81 was the spring, and then 81 was my first fall here. And incidentally, me and uh, and, and Kirk Ferentz, the obviously the current head coach, came in together mm -hmm. in that fall together. He was not in the spring. He was actually hired in, in the summertime. That's right. And uh, so he and I came in together. So we have that <laughs> that uh, kindred spirit, so to speak, of coming in as rookies together. You know, I can't imagine a better combination of Hayden Fry and Bill Snyder um, to work under. What? What? How are they alike, and how are they different? Well, um, yeah, Hayden Hayden was more uh, added a little bit more fun to it than mm -hmm. Bill did. Uh, <laughs> Bill Bill was a meticulous great football coach you know you, you can't be any other person like him to, to turn around Kansas State I mean you have to have a guy like him and he was the perfect match for Kansas State but I was blessed to have two fabulous coaches I mean I had Hayden Fry uh, and, and Bill Snyder Bill Snyder had all this very detailed very uh, exacting you, you were never not prepared now I might have thrown the ball a little bit to the other team right <laughs> yeah but that wasn't his fault I was always prepared yeah, but Hayden Fry brought that that uh, that feel of the game, that um, that confidence. He always made you feel confident as a football player, as a quarterback. So the combination of both was very powerful. It shows that they had a lot of faith in you because they, I mean, at that point, I think you said you, you passed just a few times as a senior, like yeah, just times. passed passed a few times. We were, you know we threw the ball four to five times a game in high school, and I, I set an Illinois state record and we won the state championship my junior year. And I threw for minus three yards in that game, <laughs> and I don't think that'll ever be broken. But uh, I didn't think I was ever going to get recruited, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what my future. Uh, was going to be when I was in high school. I was even thinking baseball, and maybe I could go play baseball somewhere. But all of a sudden, Hayden saw something in me that that I didn't see really, and uh, and he he took a chance on me. I had to come and come here and immerse myself in in the passing game. I didn't know anything about the passing game or how to read coverages or anything like that. So it was a really really fun. Uh, uh, experience for me to learn under a great coach as, as you know in Hayden Fry. Now you're one of the very few people, certainly maybe one of the only quarterbacks to play in five bowl games. Yeah. Uh, that was before that was allowed. Yeah, I uh, took a snap of five bowl games. Everybody asked me, you know, how, how that happened. Yeah. Um, but I, I took the last two snaps of the 1980 Rose Bowl, just two. Yeah. And I was a senior twice at Iowa, so we. My sophomore year, we went to the Peach Bowl. Mm -hmm. My junior year, we went to the Gator Bowl. My senior year, we went to the Freedom Bowl. Yeah. NCAA came back and said, hey, we, we cheated you out of a year. You only had two snaps, basically. Um, they, they eliminated a red shirt rule, rule in the Big Ten. And they, I was a senior twice, yeah. so I went. You know, doesn't everybody want to be a senior <laughs> twice in college? Uh, so I went. We went to the Rose Bowl my second senior year. That's why I took a snap in five bowl games. What was it like uh, once you decided to come back to Iowa? And I, I saw pictures of that press right. conference in '85, and it was the biggest news in the state, frankly. And then to go through that commercial where you're crawling through. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back then uh, they had videos. And all this, if you had a Heisman Trophy candidate, they yeah. sent videos all yeah. over to the media, yeah. uh, all over the country. That's what they did. Yeah. You know, it was VHS or yeah. whatever it was. So, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was a hot movie. <laughs> so we did, we patterned it after that movie. So I was looking around in yeah. the in the forest and the trees, looking for the Heisman yeah. Trophy, like Harrison Ford did, uh -huh. looking for his uh, you know looking for his ark and all his treasures. Yeah. So. That was that was uh, the brainchild of our strength and conditioning coach Bill Durvich at the okay. time, and so it was, we had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that today, Scott. <laughs> I don't think any of yeah. us could climb around and do all that. <laughs> but uh, going into that that season, everybody their high the expectations were really high, and you guys lived up to them. I mean, what what was the confidence level of the team going in, and and then once you got to number one? Yeah, it was. It's one thing to have those high expectations; you got to live up to it. Yeah. Uh, but we had a a very senior team, very confident team, but but humble towards work ethic too. We knew we had to work towards it. We had that kind of maturity that we could work and could handle those expectations. If it was a younger team, I'm not sure we could have handled that. But because we were mature and we were seasoned and had, there were a lot of guys with a lot of playing time on that team, Hayden really didn't worry about us handling the team, handling the season like that. So. 
we knew it going in, and we ended up being Big Ten champs coming out. Not a lot of teams can say that, you know, when you're going in, and right. and uh, we were able to do that because I think I do know we had some mature guys on that football team that could handle it. And uh, you know, of course, you talk time and time again about Michigan State and Michigan, but then kind of bouncing back after Ohio State because right. I know that's had to be one of the more disappointing losses you had to do. Still haunts me today, Scott. Still haunts me today, but we bounced back and played a really good Illinois team. Uh, in right. fact, they were ranked. I don't know where they were ranked, but we had them at home and beat them pretty good. I mean, we were 59 yeah, 59 to nothing and that was just a great bounce back game for us. We were upset about that Ohio State game getting away from us and, and you know, sometimes teams can you no, know, the second game affects you know yeah. gets affected too, and they they don't rebound after games like that. But I think it gets back to the maturity of that football team. Hey, we're a lot better than that, and we're going to show it today. And we did. And then Minnesota, you know, snowy right. day if I recall. Snowy day, bright sunny day. Yeah. Snowy day, cold, and we knew if we had we win this game, we're we're big outright Big Ten champs, and we knew going in we we're. I want to say we're going to win the yeah. game, but we were that kind of we had that yeah. kind of confidence going in. We were at home. Yeah, uh, we weren't going to lose that game in front of the hometown crowd to go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, uh, the Rose Bowl itself, disappointing, of course. Uh, yeah, disappointing. You know that was a game we all wanted that game for all of us, but we really wanted it for Hayden Fry. Um, that you know, I, I look back on that, and he, he went to three of those and lost all three, and that was the one probably where he had the best chance of winning it. Yeah. And uh, it didn't go right for us, and, and you know, that's the one you look back and say, that's the one we should have we should have got for Hayden. How long did it take you to kind of shake off that and then start looking ahead because you had the NFL draft? Yeah, you know, it, it, it stung for a while. Uh, and then I had to, you know, obviously got drafted by the Lions and and then life goes on. But yeah. it's, it's those games like that you remember now, yeah. you know, when you're 50 years old and you look back. And we had some fabulous wins, but for some reason you remember those losses too. And as you get older and you look back and – um, they can, they, you know, they, you still remember them. And, and, but at the time when you're in the NFL and then I was in coaching after a while and I uh, was part of a national championship at Oklahoma. And, uh, but it's those losses that never go away. They, they stay with you. Yeah, they seem to burn pretty much. And now you're in Des Moines in that area. And uh, doing yep, in Des Moines. And, and um, I'm the uh, CEO and executive director of the Iowa Sports Foundation. We have four pillars. We have the Iowa Games. 31st year of summer games. Yeah. Uh, we have our Live Healthy Iowa programs, which are web-based programs to track health and wellness and weight loss and nutrition. Yeah. Adapt to Sports Iowa, which is sports and recreation for people with physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. We love that pillar. And then we have the Iowa Senior Games. Okay. And we, we just added corporate games, which is corporations fighting it out. And so we're, we're, we're rolling. Uh, we, we're in all 99 counties with participants. We have a big board. Uh, we have a big uh, reach, um, and, and I'm proud to say we are the best in the country at what we do in all of our programs combined. And there's no other state that does everything we do. Uh, so I'm really excited about spreading health and wellness and sports and recreation statewide. Thanks so much, Chuck. I appreciate it. All right, Scott. Uh, yeah, good to talk to you today. I like that Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs>